probably about two years ago, maybe right before and during my earliest stages of being in Studio 400 and really just starting to dive into what my style is and what feels good to create, I was receiving a lot of feedback that was like, you should find a style and you should stick to it and like your work should be identifiable. Um, if somebody sees a piece hanging on the wall, they should be able to see, say that belongs to Miley just based off of looking at it. And that always felt really off and horrible to me because it's like, how am I challenging myself to make something different and to continue to grow if I'm just creating the same images over and over, whether that's the same colors or the same figure that I'm using or, um, or things of that nature. So I think that's something that I've always really pushed myself to do. And every piece is kind of incredibly different. And sometimes I feel like I don't have control over it, but I think that is my style is allowing, um, like I had talked about before, allowing the materials um, and allowing the subjects that I'm exploring to kind of guide me in, in what the finished product is. My name is Maya Lee Hartman, and I'm a 24-year-old self-taught visual artist, um, primarily working in acrylic and oil painting um, and exploring a lot of figurative work as well as some uh, West African symbology. I'd say as an artist, the biggest thing for me is um, there are no boundaries and no limits to what I can create, and I like to really challenge myself and challenge that notion in terms of the materials that I use and um, kind of playing with how the figures that I'm exploring um, are influenced by the materials that I'm using. My process doesn't usually involve any sort of planning, so when I applied for the residency it was kind of beautiful to see how quickly like bits and pieces of ideas I had came together like really cohesively. Um, and I will be studying a number of elements that will kind of all tie together um, the Adinkra sim symbols, like I mentioned, um, which is an illustrative verbal system originating in the, um, the region of Ghana and Ivory Coast. Um, and each symbol is attached to a proverb that holds a deeper truth and meaning. Um, and those are used to express um, different characteristics of people and generally worn on cloth um, at celebrations and during funerals. So I'm going to be working with some different methods of printing Adinkra symbols and kind of different ways of representing those, thinking about materials again on cloth, um, using braiding hair, which is something that I use with a lot of um, the figures that I create. Well, so the hair actually has is all hair that's like come out of my head. Mentioning that I am self-taught, so all of my process or lack thereof, I guess, um, has been like self-evolved and I feel um, like really sensitive to that and hold that close to my heart of I'm just so easily influenced by any advice or feedback or, I guess, critique I receive that is kind of surrounding, like, I don't know, I guess, telling me to do things in a different way. Um, so I think that is just a really important and, yeah, a really important part of my practice is being self-taught and kind of all the processes and techniques that I use come from trial and error and um, yeah, a really like intimate personal practice. The title of the exhibition is That Which Does Not Burn, um, which is a proverb tied to the Adinkra symbol, um, Shie Won Shie. And really the whole exhibit is just kind of highlighting the imperishability of black and brown people and thinking a lot about um, traditions and culture and um, different pieces of our culture that we've held on to with every attempt to tear us away from them 
um, braiding hair being one of those elements that's, um, that is consistent throughout the exhibit. Um, I'll also be creating some large scale portraits of community members that will be dressed in um, the cloth with the Adinkra symbols printed on it. So I want it to feel really cohesive. I want it to feel like a celebration and like a reminder of, um, yeah, the, the imperishable nature of black and brown bodies and um, also kind of a reminder that we, we house so much strength in our, our DNA and um, it's something to celebrate. As I work through the exhibition, I'm really excited to learn the traditional method of Adinkra printing, which actually happens on cloth. Um, and is a really long and involved process that I'm kind of troubleshooting how I can make possible if I am to do it here in Minnesota. Um, because the bark needs to sit on a fire for a full week, which is not necessarily something that's super easy to do here. Zan Kofa, which is um, an image of a bird that kind of creates like a almost a full circle means return to the past and get it so basically to say that um, any knowledge that we're looking for um, lessons that need to be learned have um, can be found in our ancestors and from the people that come before us um, which I think is just like a really beautiful reminder especially when things are feeling really big and scary and it's like oh People have been here before, they've done this before, um, how did they do it, and, and what can I learn from that?